Hey guys, this is Dr. Ajinka here. As you can see on the screen, uh, today's video is all going to be about the CT scan and the MRI scans. So I have seen uh, many juniors, young juniors, uh, they cannot differentiate between CT and MRI. Well, I was also there some time back in my junior residency. So to clear this concept of how you can differentiate between a CT and an MRI, uh, I'm going to clear some basic points. So I have a total of four points where you can easily differentiate. So the very first point, now listen very carefully. So we're gonna begin with the first point is whenever you are given a scan, so look for the brain area. So, okay, so as you can see on the left of my screen, uh, you can see a CT scan. So this is a CT scan. And on the right of the screen, you can see whatever you see here is the MRI scan. So on the CT scan, the brain looks like this and on the MRI the brain looks like this so whenever you're given a scan on a CT scan the brain soft tissue will always look like a grain of sand or uniform density soft tissue shadow grayish okay so you cannot see any sulci or gyri as you see on the MRI over here you will never be able to differentiate between the two halves of the brain as you can see over here you cannot appreciate any fissure uh, as you can see on the MRI. So basically what, what you can see on the MRI CT scan is all bone but not the soft tissue very clearly. So this was the first point of identifying if it's a CT scan or an MRI scan. See on the MRI scan as you can see over here you can clearly differentiate the two lobes of the brain. That's the right cerebral, that's the left cerebral. So you can also appreciate the alternate white and the gray. Uh, that is the gray matter and the white matter. You can see the sulcus, you can see the uh, gyri. So if you keep on going behind, you can appreciate the surface very well. And as you keep on going behind, you can see the fissure. You can see the corpus callosum on the coronal view. As you keep on going behind, you can see the ventricles as well. So you can see the ventricles full of CSF. And as you keep on going further behind, you can actually see the area of the cerebellum. So not just a soft tissue, you can actually see the cerebellum tentory, the tree shape appearance of the cut surface of the cerebellum. So you can actually appreciate the entire structure of the brain in detail. Okay, so this is how you can identify brain on a given scan. So if you see something like this, it is always a CT scan. And if you see something like this, it is always, always an MRI with a lot of alternate white and gray structures. So always remember this. This is how brain looks like on the MRI and the CT scan. So that's the first point. Now, what's the second point? Second point is always look for bone. Now, it's very easy for us to see a bone on a CT scan, uh, but not so much on the MRI because MRI bone is black so just like air over here you can see all the black exactly like that the bone will look like on the mri so let's begin with the ct scan i'll just correspond these two structures yeah so what you can see over here is the area of the frontal recess frontal recess similarly you can see the area of the frontal recess over here this is the maxilla this is the maxilla maxilla and this is the maxilla, the left maxilla, the right maxilla. See, if you're seeing on a CT scan, you can see the bone very clearly. That's the roof of the anterior ethmoidal skull base. That's the cribriform plate. That's the crystal gali, the lamina papyracea, the orbit, the anterior ethmoids, the maxillary sinus. This is surrounded by bone all around. You can see the tooth. You can actually see whatever bony structure, it's all bright white. But the same structure on the MRI, you cannot appreciate. You cannot see the bone on the MRI. So you can actually you know, compare the two areas. That's the frontal recess. But as you can see, if I zoom it, you can actually see there's no bony lining over. As you can see over here, you can actually see a bony lining over here for the frontal recess area. Actually, this is a frontal recess area. You can see the bony lining, but the same scan on the MRI you cannot see any bone lining same you can see this is the lamina papyracea that's the orbit 
same thing you cannot see any bony margin on the orbit same thing if you go for the maxillary sinus you can see bone covering it off from all sides same thing you can hear on the mri see just a black shadow but with no bone on the mri so you cannot you cannot see a bone on the mri scan so if you see something like this around the orbit the white structure that is not bone definitely not bone that is all fat and peri orbita having all the recti muscles so if you know that the recti must the the fat appears bright on the mri so do not confuse this as a bone well i'll be getting uh, into the concepts of the mri in the next video where i'll be explaining the entire concepts of mri for an ent surgeon and a skull based surgeon so that was the second point you have to always look for the bone if i keep on going posteriorly you can see the roof of the skull base the posterior ethmoids the uh, the perpendicular plate of the palatine the orbit the inferior orbital fissure that's the sphenoid lesser wing that's the pterygoid that's the pterygoid wedge the medial and the lateral pterygoid plates and everything i cannot appreciate these on the mri so if i keep on going behind as you can see, I am not able to see any of the structures around. What I can see is all the soft tissue, but not the bone. So wherever I want to see a bone in the MRI, I just have to follow a black line. For example, you can see this is a brain all over. This is the posterior aspect of the orbit. That's the posterior half of the nasal cavity. So you can see a fine rim of the black line over here that is actually the bony area of the skull base that differentiates or separates the brain from the nasal cavity so if there was a fracture a brain would be coming out like this and you would see not a normal straight line but an interruption in between so follow this black line which is a bony area showing that it's an intact uh, skull base so this is how you differentiate the ct and the mri basis of the bone now the third point listen very carefully the third point now as we all know that ct scan is a gold standard for the bone and mri is a gold standard for the soft tissue but ct scan has only two things a soft tissue and a, you know a bone tissue window as a soft tissue window and a bony window but the mri has got a t1 phase a t2 phase of the flare image diffusion weighted image the functional mri and all these five to six types of different MRI we can have. Also, we have a T1 post contrast. So if you have a look at this area over here, you can see actually now, as I was talking about the CT scan, as I have mentioned in my previous video, this was the image used. This was the uh, soft tissue window. This was the bony window. So in CT scan, you need to know what is a soft tissue window. It looks like this and uh, what a bony window looks like. So this is a soft tissue window. This is a bony window for a CT scan. So if you go for the MRI, we have this T1 weighted MRI. So this is T1, how it looks like. The CSF is dark and you can appreciate the white matter which is much brighter so then after t1 you can see you can see actually you can see this uh, a black rim that's actually the bony area now that's the bone remember that that's the bone and not this this bright white ring you can see outside is actually the soft tissue of the scalp and this black you can see is the bone never get confused you can see you can see a t2 weighted image where you can see the csf is all bright filling up the ventricles and the white matter is as compared to the t1 a bit dark and you can see this is a bony area over here this is a soft tissue so as you can see the t1 is much more brighter and the t2 is a kind of gray with the csf filling up after t2 you have this flare image now flare is nothing but fluid attenuation inversion recovery it is nothing but t2 with fluid attenuation so it is similar to a t2 as you can see it's similar to a t2 but only the difference is that the csf will not be visible or as a matter of fact any liquid will not be visible and after that we have this t1 weighted uh, this is a normal t1 and this is a t1 weighted with a gadolinium contrast 
So if you're given an MRI scan, how you can differentiate between a T1 weighted and a T1 weighted with gadolinium is that this is the only difference is that you can see a fine line, bright line, bright lines like these. So these are nothing but the blood vessels which are filling up with the uh, contrast gadolinium. So everything is same. The only difference is that you can see this alternate striated structures which are illuminating. These are nothing but the blood vessels filling up with the contrast. So you always have to remember T1 and T1 with contrast. After that, you have this flare and the diffusion weighted. So this is how a diffusion weighted image looks like. It is a very rough image. You cannot see something very clearly uh, as compared to the flare. So if you see something like this, it's always remember a diffusion weighted, which uses the concept of the water molecules diffusing within a particular anatomical region. So more the water molecules in the area, more the diffusion weighted will be helpful for the scan. So this is a flare and this is a diffusion weighted. And always remember, uh, this is a differentiation between a T1 and a T2, which is very, very important for the juniors, uh, the, the first year residents, the exam going residents, and even the students of the MBBS region. So you can just have a screenshot of this uh, right now, and you can just keep it for your record. So you can actually compare the T1 from the T2 with regards to different uh, structures you can see on the MRI. The next variance where we have in a CT and an MRI is, as you can see on the screen right here, uh, you can see what is a CT scan. Now, how do you identify this to be as a CT scan? You can see that this is a brain tissue all over. This is a posterior aspect and two aspect. And just immediate to the brain tissue is a bone. So this has to be a CT scan. Never confuse this with a MRI scan. So this is a CT scan and what you can see over here is a part of a bright hyper intense area showing an area of the infarct but that's a normal CT. So you have one more variant which is called as a CT angiogram. So if you're given a CT angiogram this is how it looks like. So with the bone just adjacent to the brain tissue there's no gap so this is a CT scan for sure and you can see all the contrast blood vessels over here and you can actually see an area of infarct over here an area of the occlusion so this is basically a ct angio uh, the next thing is a mr angiogram so if you see something like this so well is it an mr or a ct so i will still say that this is a ct scan so this is a ct angio so why it's a CT angio? Because you can see the brain tissue. It is it is does not does not look like a brain tissue on an MRI. If you want to compare this tissue with the previous image, you can see you can actually see the soft tissue in the brain is plain like a grain sand, like a grain of sand. And similarly, you can see over here it looks like a grain of sand. So you always be sure that this is a CT angio. And this is a three-dimensional CT angio, a 3D CT angio. So always remember that this is a CT angio. Now, I'm going to show you an image of the MR angio. Now, as you can see over here, this is an area of the MR angio. You can appreciate the fine difference between the brain tissue over here on the MR angio and on the CT angio. Also, one more point you can actually see is that you cannot see bone on this image. Actually, this is a brain tissue over here. That's the brain tissue. And you can actually see a huge area of black shadow over here. This is not the air shadow, but the shadow of the bone seen on the MRI. And this is the area of the soft tissue on the scalp region. So this is an MR angio and this is the uh, pure uh, differentiation from the CT angio. So whenever you see something like this, this is an MR angio. Uh, next, we also move on to one more image where you can actually see I have, you know, uh, collaged it with a differentiation like this. On the left, you can see what is a CT scan. On the right, you could see is an MRI scan. So immediately adjacent to the brain tissue, you can see the bone. So always remember this is a CT scan. And here on the MRI, what you immediately see adjacent to the, the brain tissue is a thick rim of black shadow so this is an MRI scan
always remember the difference so you can actually see over here you can actually see the sulci and the gyri so many people will differentiate that to be as an MRI but never get confused you always have to look for the bone over here this is immediately adjacent and here you can see the MRI the black bone tissue shadow so this is a CT and this is an MRI always remember this difference so next what we are going to move on to is the fourth point as you can see over here the fourth point is uh, whenever you have a uh, CT and an MRI as as I've said before MRI is gold standard for soft tissue and CT is a gold standard for a bone study okay so suppose if I get a nasal bone fracture or a skull base defect following a road traffic accident I will never go for an MRI until and unless I'm suspecting a brain prolapse into the nasal cavity so I'm going to show you a CT scan of an area where I'm going to show you the nasal bone fracture as you can see over here this is an area of the nasal bone fracture you can this is an axial section of a CT scan you can see this is a nasal bone fracture towards the right side the tip of the nasal bone is totally fractured it's actually a compound fracture a displaced multiple displaced fragments you can see so if you can go behind you can actually see you can actually appreciate the area of the bone fracture I can show you a coronal image of the same patient where I can actually show you the uh, nasal bone fracture in a coronal view so as you can see over here this is a nasal bone fracture you can see it's completely distorted it is a complete displaced fracture of the right side towards the right side the same thing you cannot appreciate on an MRI so certain things a CT scan is very helpful for in case of skull base defects or a nasal bone or any facial bone trauma so if it's a case of a soft tissue tumor uh, I will definitely go for an MRI so here I have an MRI scan where it's showing me an axial view this is a T2 scan because the the globe is bright white so it's T2 and as you can see over here uh, if I want to have a look on the optic nerve if I want to study an optic nerve or the uh, orbit as such or if I want to study on brain if there is any brain prolapse through the skull base defect I will definitely go for a MRI so as you can see over here this is a normal case you can see the bright white structure this is the uh, peri or bita, the fat in the globe uh, you can also see this black structure over here that's actually uh, the muscles so this is the intracoronal part of the orbit the soft tissue which is surrounding the optic nerve this is the muscle over here so as you can see this is a globe this is the medial rectus over here the black thing see if you're going for an MRI scan be it T1 or T2 muscles will be always gray they will never flare up they will never illuminate so what you can see over here is a medial rectus what over here you can see is the lateral rectus muscle and in between what you can see is actually the uh, soft tissue surrounding the optic nerve and also the optic nerve be it a T1 or a T2 will never illuminate optic nerve never illuminates on an MRI orbit or a PNS if the optic nerve is illuminating on a T2 scan it is definitely a case of a optic neuritis so normally as you can see over here it is black gray and you can see a thin rim of white fluid around so that is nothing but a CSF so as you all guys know that CSF is present around the optic nerve because the optic nerve covering is nothing but a continuation of the dura over it so it is definitely going to have uh, subarachnoid space as well as CSF around the optic nerve so what you see over here is the CSF in the optic nerve which is completely normal and the normal optic nerve appears to be as gray it never illuminates if it is illuminating it is definitely a case of optic neuritis so for any soft tissue study I will definitely go for the MRI so if I have to have a uh, coronal section of this patient I will definitely uh, use this to study a case of uh, a brain so this is a coronal image and as you can see the brain is very much easily visible so if I want to study a brain prolapse 
this is a fine black rim of bone so if had there been a skull base defect and the brain tissue prolapsing causing a meningoencephalocele i will definitely go for a ct for the skull base defect as well as the mri for the brain defect so the brain will be like prolapsing like this you can actually differentiate the brain tissue from the nasal secretion from the tumor now as i showed you some time back uh, always remember this concept a tumor will always be hyper intense in t1 uh, and uh, hypo intense in t2 whereas the nasal secretions or any fluid will be hypo intense on t1 and hyper intense in t2 and the fat on t1 will be bright the fat on t2 will be light bright and the inflammation or any inflamed tissue will be uh, you know it will be bright on t2 and somewhat dark on t1 so there are certain differences between the t1 and t2 you always have to remember so you can see here uh, this is a t1 image uh, and this is a bony area so this is a gold standard for soft tissue study so always remember that so also if i want to study for a pituitary gland or any uh, any uh, any uh, brain defect i will always go for a mri so as you can see over here I'm, if i'm going towards the sphenoid area this is the area of the cavernous sinus the orbital apex so any orbital apex syndrome or any optic nerve issue i will definitely go for a mri scan or a ct scan so if it's a optic nerve palsy or a blindness following a uh, traumatic incident i will definitely go for a ct scan for the bony defect uh, for any bony fragment on the optic nerve or and after that i will go for an mri to study the soft tissue so this is how you can identify an mri a soft tissue a bony window ct scan in different places and different conditions also you need to know uh, i'll show you one more scam so as you can see over here this is a scan you can see this is a case of a choroidal melanoma on an orbit so this is for the ophthalmic surgeons out there so if you see something like this you cannot appreciate this very well on a ct scan on a ct scan it will be just like any other soft tissue but on the mri scan it is definitely going to be uh, as you can see this is a t1 image and this is hyper intense so it says has to be a tumor so on t1 a tumor is always hyper intense so this is a t1 and this is hyper intense as compared to the surrounding structures so this has to be a tumor it is a choroidal melanoma and this is how you can identify and differentiate between the soft tissue and the bony structures on mri and the ct scan so always remember that and also uh, uh, there are various other points where you can actually look for the differentiation between a ct and an mri so i hope this video gave you a lot of uh, clear concepts regarding the ct and the mri differentiation and identification so uh, keep subscribing and keep liking uh, in due course of time i'll be uploading the various arteriography images uh, how you perform an arteriography uh, in case of a gna for skull based surgeons for fest surgeons how you can identify the internal carotid artery on an arteriogram, the various parts of it and the branches of the uh, internal carotid artery I'll be covering up in my next video. So stay tuned, keep subscribing, keep liking. See you soon, guys. Thank you so much.